Mustashi, Zed Bot, Ibn. According to ancient astrologers, the movement of the sun, moon, and planets directly controls our lives and our destinies. Sound implausible? Perhaps. So we went to a leading astrologer, and he agreed to let us put him to the test. Jeffrey Armstrong has studied astrology for nearly 30 years and has performed 25,000 astrological readings. Rather than relying on traditional Western astrology, the type you see in the newspaper, Armstrong specializes in Vedic astrology, an Eastern version which he claims uses a far more accurate mapping of the stars. There's invisible, powerful forces that are constantly shaping our experience of life. Virginia Bowen practiced astrology for 10 years until she came to a sobering discovery. I got out of astrology because I realized that what I was really doing was practicing psychology without a license. We asked Virginia to analyze a reading Jeffrey Armstrong did for Los Angeles-based business executive Alice Seegers, a person highly skeptical of astrology. Alice and Jeffrey never spoke or met prior to the reading, and all Jeffrey was provided with was Alice's date, time, and place of birth. You're suited for executive positions. You have a strong Mars. Mm -hmm. That means you were probably used to be in charge of things a lot in your life. Is it so? Yes. You're Capricorn rising, and Capricorn rising is one of those rising signs uh, that if you don't trim them, your eyebrows uh, tend to get a little bit bushy. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> he has made his first big hit. She's been reserved up till now. He probably was able to look at her and say, this is a woman who probably plucks her eyebrows. And she responds very warmly, so he takes that and runs with it. They're now bonding. What the timing of the horoscope says is about <clears throat> two years ago, you started going through a more turbulent period. You changed jobs, you changed careers, you made a decision, you got out of a relationship, Something happened. A mother or father died. Something happened within your life within the last, say, three years. Yes. Yeah? Yes. What was it? Uh, my father died of cancer. Right. And was that a major Yeah, it was. Time it was yes. I, I, quit, um, I quit my job to uh, be with him. That's that sweet nurturing side of your temperament that comes <laughs> from the sun in Taurus, which would give up themselves out of love and, and therefore you're the kind of person who if, if you love someone you love them totally Absolutely. and give yourself completely Absolutely. it's not a halfway thing wow good thank doing you. your reading pleasure. yes <laughs> officially blew me away thank you my pleasure <laughs> people have been given dogmatic versions of astrology or amateurish versions of it and rejected it but they haven't been given the scientific version of astrology its truest form and thought about that we challenged Jeffrey to use his allegedly scientific method to produce nine more astrological readings. However, this time he couldn't see or talk to his subjects. All Jeffrey was provided with was each person's date, time, and place of birth, as well as their gender. Once he researched the charts, we videotaped each three-minute reading then played them back to the nine test subjects. Jeffrey secretly watched in an adjacent room to see how well he did. Okay, here you go. Uh, Jennifer, this is you. Person A, they'll start out in the beginning of their life not as uh, heavy, more toward the slender side, but then after the age of 40, they'll tend to put on a little bit more weight. Um, probably had a difficult father relationship or separation from father, wasn't around as much. There's also likelihood that this person was a dancer or a martial artist. Jennifer, the martial arts and the right. dancer. I thought it was interesting he picked up on that because I did study Taekwondo. You did? Interestingly enough. <laughs> uh -huh. And I do uh, love to dance. So that was pretty good. Okay. So Especially, I mean, to pull martial arts out of a hat, that's not something that... That's not general. No. I had a very wonderful relationship with my father. We were extraordinarily close, so he was completely off the money on that one. Overall, Jennifer agreed with nine out of Jeffrey's 13 statements, giving him an accuracy of 69%. Well, the first thing that's very obvious here is that they are a bit of a clown, or uh, when they were growing up was probably the smart aleck or the comedian, the, the humorist in the group. Their speech is at times strong. Uh, they could even be a speaker. You do have a strong voice. Yeah, a lot of people actually, when I'm working, a lot of people say, oh, you should do voiceovers. I was, uh, up until college, very shy, uh, not the class clown at all. The accuracy for this reading, 63%. This is definitely a person who's been a lot of places and done a lot of things. They're probably wealthy as well, 
or have attracted wealth. Uh, this is a, a good looking a person, um, photogenic, uh, good dresser, and uh, very charismatic and attractive. Did you people talk to this guy? <laughs> I mean, did we tell him things about you? No. An accuracy of 89%. This is a person who has some detail ability, as um, tends to put other people forward rather than themselves. This is a great supporting person. Definitely a caregiver. Uh, definitely put people, uh, I mean, it played a supportive role. Yes, I'm very detailed, uh, very organized. For this reading, the accuracy was 71%. For the next three readings, Jeffrey's accuracy remained fairly consistent. This person could have bushy eyebrows, high artistic values, high aesthetic values. This also is a person who could have had car problems. We decided to test these readings in a simple way. If the statements being made were just general, then we should be able to switch the readings and still receive a high level of accuracy. We didn't tell Jeffrey Armstrong we were going to do this, nor did we tell anyone in the room. We simply played Debbie's reading and told Sharon it was hers. This person will have uh, good children, benefits through children, a positive relationship to children. Uh, this person is not in their very best period right now, they're experiencing obstacles. This person is also someone whose relationship to their parents was good. Okay. Wow, well, I'm an optimist and he was really wrong on some things. <laughs> I have no children. Uh, uh, my parent relationship is not good. Now experiencing a few obstacles, maybe. The best time of my life ever. Right now. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Interestingly, the wrong reading was only 38% accurate. We then played Debbie, Sharon's reading. Again, totally unbeknownst to anyone. This person would probably have more than one marriage. I would think at least two or it'll be difficult for them to find a partner at first so there could be a delay. The kind of person who would do something first and think about the consequences later or rush toward doing something before they looked at the map. The one thing where he says that I act before I think, that is so unlike me. If anything, I overanalyze things until people are sick of hearing about it and then I do it. He talked about more than one marriage. I've only been married once. With this switched reading, the accuracy fell to only 21%. Well, for all your readings, you got the correct readings, except we flip-flopped you two. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. We then played Debbie her actual reading. This person will have uh, good children, benefits through children, a positive relationship to children. Well, that actually does sound a little bit more like me, I must say. First of all, I don't mean to brag, but my <laughs> little girl is a charm. Her correct reading was 92% accurate. Then we played Sharon her real reading. This person would probably have more than one marriage. I would think at least two, or it'll be difficult for them to find a partner at first, so there could be a delay. Uh, I think this is uh, much more myself, I mean, by far and away. More than one marriage? Yes, but I waited 25 years to marry this man, so <laughs> that part about waiting is true. Sharon's real reading, 94% accurate. Not only did the accuracy percentage drop dramatically when Debbie and Sharon were given the wrong readings, but when they were given the correct ones, the accuracy shot up to the highest level of all the readings. Overall, the test subjects agreed with 105 out of 137 statements, giving Jeffrey an accuracy of 77%. The Master Astrologer, Jeffrey, come on in. <laughs> Should Jeffrey Armstrong have been able to make accurate statements 77% of the time just on generalities, logical guesses, and dumb luck? I don't think you can explain what I did as luck because I didn't see the nine people at all. Obviously astrology used properly has the ability to see certain patterns or core things that I shouldn't have known just from their birth information. But I respect skepticism as the beginning of intelligent thought in any subject to start out looking for reality rather than belief.